We are again thinking through the word. Philippians chapter 2, short paragraph which reminds us to have the mindset of Christ in our serving of others. Let's look at verse 19 and continue through verse 24 and not only see this theme, but also learn a little bit about how we study our Bibles. Philippians chapter 2, verse 19, gives us this primary sentence. I hope to send Timothy to you. But in this expression of hope, he gives us this interesting phrase. I hope in the Lord Jesus. Something about in the Lord Jesus is telling us about hope. And the question we have is, what does it mean to hope in the Lord Jesus? And I suppose when we think of that, we could think of our sentence, he hopes to send Timothy, and we could say, you know, our motive, our motive should be governed by the Lord Jesus. We could also think of our purpose governed by the Lord Jesus, our method of sending Timothy, specifically governed by the Lord Jesus. It gives us some some seed thoughts of what it means to hope in the Lord Jesus to do something relatively routine or practical. So something about hope in our motive, our purpose, our method, is governed by the Lord Jesus. It just gets us thinking. What's unique is that in our paragraph, we have the same idea, the end of the paragraph. So look down at verse 23, and we'll see it again. Uh, Paul here now, having talked about sending Timothy, makes his summary of his desire. I hope, therefore, he's kind of explained it, so that points back to everything before. I hope to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me. So I hope, similar to our first sentence, to send him. Then we have word of conjunction and, so joining this to this sentence, I hope to send him and I trust in the Lord that I will come. So there's some, there's some parallel here. There's, I hope, parallel to, I trust in the Lord. And there's, I hope to send him, and I hope I will come also. In just this one paragraph, it helps us to understand something of hope as it relates to trusting in the Lord. This reminds me of Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. I think, uh, I think Paul, as he writes this, is saying, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you, or this is my plan, this is my plan, but ultimately... I'm trusting in the Lord. I hope to send Timothy, but that is going to be up to the Lord Jesus to ultimately accomplish that. Now, why is Timothy so crucial to Paul's plan for the people at Philippi? Well, here's what he says. Verse 20 gives a key word for So here's a reason for this verse. Why does he hope to send Timothy? For I have no one like him. What does he mean by that? Well, someone who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. Well, that's that's an impressive characteristic about Timothy, but it's explained further with another word for describing what was just said. There's no one like Timothy who is concerned for their welfare. Does that need explanation? Yes. For they all, that's 
That's the same as the no one. There's no one like Timothy. There's Timothy and there's everyone else. No one, they all seek their own interests, not the interests of Jesus Christ. Now, we would almost expect the text to read, not the interest of others, right? For all seek their own interests, not those of others. But the text doesn't say that. It says the interest of Jesus Christ. Somehow I think we have to understand that Jesus Christ is a bigger theme than just serving others. He's seeking the interests of Jesus Christ, which would certainly include the interests of others. That's almost inherent in the greatest commands that Jesus taught when he said the greatest command is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then the second command is like to that first one in loving others. So Timothy is genuinely concerned for their welfare, not seeking his own interest, but seeking the interest of Jesus Christ in the growth of the Philippians. Paul goes on. A word of contrast, but. They all seek their own interests, but you know Timothy's proven worth. In other words, he doesn't seek his own interest. You know Timothy's worth in contrast to the selfish ones. Now, what is, what is this proven worth? Well, it unfolds. How, as a son with a father, he has served with me in the gospel. This is another, this is another instance of renaming. He has served with me in We would think because of this great contrast with what comes before seeking their own interests, Timothy's proven worth would be that he has served with me in perhaps meeting the interests of others. But instead it says in the gospel. And that's because the gospel is bigger than the interests of others. The interest of others is important. However, it is swallowed up in the gospel. The gospel is God and his mercy saving sinners through faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, he gives his son Jesus in the interest of saving sinners. If we've tasted that gospel, then we will live with a focus on serving others. And so Timothy, having tasted the gospel, His proven worth is that he serves in the gospel, which is the ministry to others. So this whole paragraph has all of these renaming elements to it that help us understand uh, the simplicity of Paul saying, I hope to send Timothy to you. And that hope is actually governed by the theme of trusting in the Lord. I have no one like Timothy who's genuinely concerned for your welfare. What does that mean? It means he's not selfish, but he acts like Christ. And it reminds all of us that today our proven worth will be in serving the gospel, which will look like not seeking our own interests, but seeking God's interests for what he wants in others and pushing them that way. Is it any wonder the text would tell us in Hebrews to provoke one another to love and to good works? That's what God wants for us. And so we will urge each other down that path. Is there someone this week that you can invest in genuinely concerned for their welfare because you have experienced God's genuine concern for yours. It's quite a task. Grace and peace to you for it.